Hey guys, David Lemon here. Today we are going to be working with images. There is a couple of people that messaged me uh, in the group and also in private messages on Facebook that they are struggling with having images and working with images, importing them, choosing them from a library, styling them, uh, centering them, and basically just getting the style of the pages that they actually want. So today we will be focusing on that one. Um, this build was actually something that I wanted to do, or this video is something that I wanted to do for quite a long time now, but I didn't manage to get on it. But I think now is the time to work on the image styling and layout because um, I did a video yesterday about centering um, elements on the page but still people are struggling with styling and doing different layouts with their images. <clears throat> so what, what I wanted to show you is how to, uh, how to do interesting layouts like this one over here. So this video is inspired by, by one of the users in the, in the group. His name is Tong G. I, I'm probably saying it incorrectly but basically this is a bill that he posted a couple of days ago and some people messaged me like how how can i create images like this one like there are borders and and, and all kinds of different stuff is 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 edited on these images so i just wanted to go in and then show you how you can get simple styling like this one it is pretty simple in case you know you're what you're doing however uh, for some people even the basic images uh, could could make a lot of trouble so this is why i'm doing this uh, video today we'll be styling and doing layouts with images in groove pages so uh, let me just start by by doing the basics first for example let me just get into my Groove Pages account. I will be showing you how to import your images, how to choose images from the library that we have integrated there. There's a couple of useful tools that you may or may not know that you could use uh, for styling your images already inside Groove Pages. And then we will get, uh, get on. I have a couple of interesting tools to show you so that you can use and then create uh awesome looking where is it awesome looking style it's like these ones so let me just get in and then start with working with images so i will just create an empty uh empty block over here and then i will just place an element in the middle of it this element will be an image this is the normal image with a square basically a square image so once you click on it and you come over here to configure in the right hand corner you can go and choose an image we have two options one to choose from your files you can upload an image here so when when you click on it then your file explorer opens and then you can choose an image here or you can come over here this is a free stock photos library which you can use for your own bills. This is uh, not copyrighted. This is from uh, free photo uh, library websites like Pixabay or Unsplash. This is already built into the software, so it's very simple to use. Let's say I want to find, of course, a lemon. I will choose my picture. Let's use the first one. I just clicked on it, and now you will see the options I get once this is uploaded in my library, okay? So you can see it is chosen now. I can, I can uh, work on the aspect ratio. This means that I can edit the size of the image. What I usually do is I leave this on because I, if I click this basically off, I can edit the width and the height, but it will not stay as it is. So somebody took a picture of these lemons and it is an image like this. If I unclick the fixed aspect ratio, the image can be that the height is, is this way, but now it, it will be smooshed, so the picture will not look nice. So what I usually do is I suggest you to do as well, to leave the aspect ratio on. 
So this is a is a huge image. This is 4,000 pixels. Imagine 4,000 dots next to each other uh, in width, and then 2,700 something dots uh, in height. So if we if we resize this image, if we make it a bit smaller by using this fixed aspect ratio, then we will make the image smaller, but it will not lose the quality. Okay. So what I usually do for my builds for my sites. I try to see where I'm going to use the image. If I'm going to use this image on a background, then I'm going to resize it to be a full HD image. Full HD is 1920, okay? This is approximately the size I'm using usually. I just click the update dimensions, and then I wait for this green bar, the green uh, box to show up that it is actually saved, and we can start working with that. However, this is not everything we can do. We can go inside and also work with the image. Let me just choose another one just to show you. For example, this uh, lady here, it is loading the image. And now we got a edit button over here. This is a pencil. Once we click it, we come into a, a editor that is built in. So what this allows us to do is actually crop out the image that we want to use. If we want to make it a bit more square, we can do that like this and then we actually crop out only the part that we want to use. So I want to use from her fingertips until the fingertips on the other hand. So the rest, I just want to cut out. So I can also rotate the picture in case you have pictures that you uploaded incorrectly. You can rotate them within the software itself. So you don't have to do some extra photo editing or something like that. This is all inside Groove Pages. So once I'm happy with the look, I just click confirm and it is now being saved. You can now see that it is giving you another option to upload. Um, what, it, what the software does is it is editing the picture, but it didn't actually, it, it, if you just go and select this picture, it will not use the edited one. You need to click the upload so that it actually uploads another picture into your library so that it uses uses the edited picture, okay? I hope you're following me. Please type in the comments in case I'm doing, um, doing it too fast or in case you have some questions about the whole thing, I would really like to explain it to you so you understand. So basically now we, uh, now we work with our image. Let's just go and select it so we can see our image here. And then I just want to click update. <laughs> so this is our picture now imported. You can see that it is uh, not full HD image as we as we put it uh, before. It is not 1920, the width of the image, but because we cropped it a bit inside, so we cut off one part on the one side and one part on the other side, it is now smaller, as you can see here, the, the size of it. And then basically, this is how it was imported. Let's just go outside and resize this image. So people were asking me, how can I resize my image? It is too big or it is too small or I cannot see it. So the way you do that is you click on the image, you go over here to the sizing options, and then you need to make sure that here it says min, uh, min width and then max width. Uh, if it's saying something like this, XXS, for example, this will be the max width. So you cannot go, you cannot increase the size bigger than XXS. So this is the first thing I usually look at once I have a small picture on a page. So for example, if I want to make a picture uh, big, but not, not as big as, as it is now, I usually come here to the width and then choose pixel. This will allow me to actually increase the pixel sizing. So I can I can just pull the lever to the one to one of the sides and then uh, and then make sure that the image is the size that I actually want to use. So for example, I want to put on this on this part over here, I want to put some text. So I would like my image to say in this size over here. So I am happy with that. I will just close it and save this. Okay. So this is basically how you can resize your images, import them, and then work with them. So there's a couple of different options here in, um, in Groove Pages. You can also put borders 
it is not available for all the elements but you can see once we once we style this then our pay our picture just try to click out of it our picture now has a little bit these edges are are cornered these corners of the image are are not sharp this was edited using this borders option here and then we edited the corners you see once you increase them completely it gives you a some sort of a, a circle or image um, but in case you would like to edit this more so for example only on one side put on borders so so the cornered edges and then on the other side none uh, then you can come in here to custom options and then and then here you can see so this is the left upper hand side uh, corner the lower left hand side corner and then also on the right hand side here and then here so what you can do is you can click on this one for example in case you want to edit only the upper uh, right hand side corner and then you can just pull this in like this and hopefully only this one moved this is a bit a uh, bit tricky now but what i usually do in, in case i want to do um uh, i want to move the corners around uh, on one of my elements i just choose these options so you can choose for example medium you can choose large excel and so on to edit your your corners on the on your elements the other option is in case you want to use a circular image one of the options is to move it like this however i don't suggest you to do that we in the elements tab have a separate element called a round image so i will just pull in my round image and we'll put in the same image that we have here so configure choose the image and then I just want to choose the one that I have here. You can see this is the one that we edited. So we cropped it in a bit. So this is the one. Okay. And now we have an actual round image. It is fully round, not like this. This looks like a some sort of a potato. It is here on this part. It is, uh, it is flat and then it starts rounding from this part. But once we pull in an element called a round image, then we have an actually fully round image. We increase the sizing the same way as we did with the, with the earlier picture. So you can see here the width and the height were already edited. So I just want to put them on pixels and the height I will put to auto. So here now I can, I can increase the pixel. Let me just see something went wrong relative to the just go back it actually made a potato from this one as well let me just go back and see where it where we did something wrong okay so now we have an image and we have relative to the page 48 relative to the page 48 let's just see if we can increase the pixel sizing on both of these okay so i want it to be like this actually want it to be 450 pixels and also here I would need to increase it to 450 pixels to be an actual round image so you need to you need to increase the height and the 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 width with the same amount so that you have a, a complete fully round picture so this is the two image elements that we have available in the elements tab now you hopefully know how to pull your images in, how to upload images, how to choose them from the library, how to crop it within Groove Pages. And now I would like to go and show you what Tong did with his build over here. He did something, something interesting. He actually took and cornered the images on one side a bit more than on the other, but over here, he left it flat. So this is what I would like to show you. I was actually experimenting with this one. This is very smart what he did, and it looks really, really catchy. You don't see a lot of sites with these kind of uh, funky looking images. And this is what I really like because once you're scrolling a page that looks like this, it really catches your eye. 
it, if you are into page building like me, then this makes you really happy um, as it makes me happy. And this was a challenge for me because I, I, never, I never did this before. So I wanted to experiment and then see how he did it. Um, let me see, uh, Thomas Bell says, howdy. Hi, Thomas, it's, I'm happy to have you here again. Um, I have a Facebook user who said, how did he create the left page over the right page? Okay, so this image was not created using uh, Groove Pages. This image that he has here, that he posted to our Facebook group, he probably created using a Photoshop or another photo editing app. So this one, it is, it is created with a different app, but, in case you're asking about this image, for example, there is a black background and then he, he placed a bicycle on it. This was also created using a photo editing apps. Um, I will not be going inside this options now. This is completely outside Groove pages, so I don't want to go in this now, but I will be showing you how you can create images like these with rounded edges and how you can place them on the page so that they are completely on the side. So basically they are touching the border of the page and then also plotting in some other elements on the side here. So this is what I wanted to show you. So let's just analyze what he has here. He has an image that was probably a, a flat image like this. He, he, made, uh, he made nice curved corners on here and I was, searching online a bit and then I found a tool that does this. It, it's called onlinepngtools.com forward slash round minus PNG minus corners. I will link this uh, I will link this tool in the in the description of this video so you'll be able to access it from there once this live stream is done. But let's just go and then experiment with it. I want to import a file. This is an image from your computer. Let me just choose one. Uh, let's see. Let's choose this guy over here sitting on a uh, on a sofa. So you can see here you have some options for top corner radius, bottom corner radius, um, and and so on. So one option is to edit this corner. The other one is to edit this corner and also the bottom ones. So you can actually go inside and and put specific, specific uh, radius, like numbers that you want to, to round your image with. So, so let me just put everything back, back to zero. And see, this, this is the, the image I will be, uh, I will be looking at once I input the numbers. So let's just say that I want to see this lower uh, right-hand corner uh, Basically, I want to core, I want to edit the corners on this part of the image, so I put, I put in 200. 200. See, now, See, now I, edited I edited the corners, the corners on this part of this here, part but here, everything but else stayed the, stay the same. Everything else, everything, same. Else, everything, else, everything flat. else is flat. Let me just increase, Let me just increase this by 800. 800. You See, now I, I now I actually made, made actually an image an image that is, that cut, is off, cut off very symmetrically, very symmetrically, but only but this only corner this was corner was the other one other one stay the same. So, so this is, this is something, something that he, that he, he, was, using. he was using. He probably, he probably was, using was using Photoshop, Photoshop or, or other editing, other editing tools, tools similar, similar to that. To that. But, but for, for us normal, normal people, people that are not that are very, very savvy, savvy, this is a this very, is a good, very tool, good tool that you can use. And also, and also what, it, what it does, does is, is gives you gives transparent, transparent background. background. So, so once you once export, export this image, image this corner, corner Will not, will be, not visible. be visible. It will basically, it will basically cut, off cut off the picture, picture here, here, so, so that, that once, you once you place it on a background, background that has, has a different, different color, color. It's not, it's not white, white or, or something, something else, it will, it will actually, actually be transparent, transparent only the image, image will be shown, shown as, as it is, is on, on this build, build here. here. So, so actually, let's go and try to see what he did. So here on the upper right hand corner, he has only a bit of uh, of edges corner but here he he made quite a bit of uh, corners so let me just try to replicate that so i think he made here something like 500 or 600 and on the upper one i think he did like 150 or something like this so okay so this is the bottom left i actually want to work with the top right so 150 so 250 
300. Let's just have a look. I think it's actually more like 100. Let's just leave it on 100, and then let's just let's just export the image just so that it. Um, I have a Facebook user who says, "Is it just me, or but you have a serious echo?" Do you guys hear me well? Is it is it also echoing for you? I really want to make this so that we can use this uh, video in the future. So just please type it in, type in in case you can hear me well, or if it's uh, if it's if you hear an echo while I'm talking. Yes, major echo. Oh God. Okay, let me just see if I can work with this. Okay, guys, can you hear me now? Is it better now? I just turned off some some plugins that I was using for noise reduction. Could you tell me now if it's better? Yes, there is an echo. This is Jonathan Carlson saying, um, could you guys check if it if it's better now? I turned off some of my plugins that I was using. Echo disappear. <laughs> Okay, I'm not quite sure who you are, but thank you very much for confirming it. Um, one more thing, guys, I a bit better. Okay, so I have a couple of people that are commenting <laughs> much better. Um, I unfortunately cannot see your names. In case you would please head over to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, or just click in the link that is now in the description of, uh, of, this, of this video. You will be able to just approve the approve StreamYard to use your name and your profile picture. So while we are doing these live webinars, uh, I can actually see your name and uh, and reply to your, your uh, comments and questions. For example, you can see here, Jonathan Carlson, he did it and now I can see his image or here and his name. So I can actually thank him for um, commenting on this post. So if you could just please head over to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook or just click in the link uh, in the description of this video, you would be able to uh, just click on approve and then I would be able to, to see your uh, your faces and also the names. So I have Eric uh, answering, good, perfect. Thank you very much, Eric, for approving StreamYard. But let me just get back to the build now in that you can hear me uh, well. I just want to go and import this image that we just rounded the, the edges on it. I want to save, just download it. Okay. okay, we'll just use this one and I will be going and then importing it to our page. So I want to delete everything that I did here and I will start from scratch. So I want to just use an empty block. So I clicked here on the blocks, wireframes, and then I just put in an empty container. In my videos, guys, I usually work with uh, with building from scratch. I don't use templates. I love templates, but I think I can learn more once I am building everything from scratch. And this way, I can transfer over my knowledge that I learned from my experiments uh, to you guys so that in case you have some uh, specific questions about elements or building pages that I can actually go in and answer you guys. Uh, good. So what I want to do is I want to do a similar layout as a tongue did on on here. So we will be recreating only this this part over here. So he used a two column layout. So this is a one column, and then the other column is here on the right hand side. On the left column he has just an image, and then on the right hand side column he has a, a heading, and then a text. And as well, he had some background image. This is the pink over here with this bar, but I will not be going into this and redoing that part now. I will just be doing the heading text and then this picture. So let's just start doing that. I will pull in an element. This is a two column element. Okay, so on one of the sides, we will pull in a image not the rounded image. I don't want to have a rounded image. I just want to have the full image that we just downloaded from our rounding tool. And then on this side, I will want to import or just pull in a heading element and a paragraph. This is 
something similar that he has going on over here. So an image, heading, and some paragraph text. So let's work with our image. This is the fun part. Um, so I click on the image uh, placeholder here. I come over here to the configure tab in the right hand corner. I click the choose image button. And you see here the first uh, square box here that you can see. I will take my image and just pull it inside. I just release the, uh, my mouse cursor and then click upload. Once you want to crop it, you can also crop it, uh, crop your images before uploading them. You can click here and then the crop tool appears so you can actually uh, make the image uh, smaller or wider or rotate it as, as you wish. But I will not be doing that. I just want to upload it as it is. So you can see now it is uploaded. It appeared over here, and then um, and then we we have this upload image uh, square empty again. This is how I know that the that the image was uploaded successfully, and as well it appears here with the select button appearing pink. So I will click the select button to choose this image, and then it is going to be appearing here soon. I will just click update. And now I have it on my page. So that is it. We're just going to be positioning it now. So this is the, the, the fun part for me, guys. Um, it may be a bit annoying for you because it involves uh, working with blocks, containers, layouts, and, and all this stuff down below this page. Um, so let's just start from the beginning. I have a block. This is basically over here, you can see this is the full width element on the page. On the block, we have container. This is the container. You can see it is not touching the edges of this page over here. That means that it is not full width. To have the image that we just put on the left-hand side to be all the way until the, the edge of the screen, I want to make sure that our container that we see here is uh, basically full width. The way I do it is I can click here on width, make it full, and also put max width and then make it full. You see, now it, now it grew a bit. The picture just went, went like this a bit. So that's one of the parts. Um, in, the, in the block, in the container now, we have two columns as well. So we want to make sure that I also increase the, the column size that the image is in. This is called the container. This is our column. You can see here, I can just make it bigger, bigger for you. Here, there is a little bit of gap. So the image is not all the way to the, to the uh, left-hand side border to, of the screen. So once I'm in the container mode here, I'm in the container element, I will come over here to sizing, and I will also make sure that this is full. So click over here and then make sure that this is full. That's fine. The next thing I want to do is just click on the layout. You see, this is the layout, and this is also full. So that's perfect. This is what I want to have. And the last thing I need to do is just see if there is any spacing applied somewhere. Now, the image should be, should be all the way to the edge of it, but it, it is possible that there is some spacing on one of these elements. Ah, we found it. So I clicked on the, let me just uh, pull this so you can see me. I clicked on the layout, and then you can see in the spacing tab, there's a two pixel padding on the left and the right. So once I remove it, you can see guys, now the image is all the way until the, the edge of the screen. Let me just quickly save it and then preview it so you can see as well on this. You can see there is no gap. It is all the way until the uh, until the border of the screen. So there is no gap between the image and, the, and the, the side of my screen. So this is what we wanted to achieve and this is what Tom was doing also on here. So now we achieved the first part. This is the one of the columns. Now we are going and then making sure that uh, the second column is basically centered. You can see that the text is in the middle of it, and also this text is also centered in the middle of the container. So let's just do that now. I want to just 
do a bit of padding. You can see here, Tong had a bit of padding from this side, so there's a gap between the text where it starts and the border of the screen, and also here as well. So let's do that first. I will choose the container. Okay, it didn't work. I will click on the text and then try to choose the container that it is in. Okay, so now you can see there is this green outline around my, uh, my text elements over here. And I will come over here to the spacing options and just increase the padding on the left and the right. This, when I pull in a bit, this will make sure that I have I have padding from one side and also from the other side here. So I'll just leave it as it is. And then without leaving my container element, I will just make sure in the layout option that everything is centered in the center. So basically everything is, everything is positioned in the center. And then also just to make sure we can also put text to be in the center. Now you can see, we got a really nice uh, look over here. What we can still do is to push the text a bit lower so that this is not, this is the picture and this is where the text starts. I want to actually push the, uh, push the text a bit lower. So I will go into the spacing and then I can increase the padding or, or the margin. I can do it on the margin as well, like this, so that my text doesn't start all the way on the top of the page, but it starts somewhere from here. You can also put some space between the head and the paragraph text like this. And then this is approximately roughly what Tong was doing in this block over here. For the second block, he just took, he just took, he duplicated it. For example, he took the block, he duplicated it, and then he just made the second image rounded on this side. You can see this is the, the side that he rounded the image on the below. So he just took this block, in my opinion, he duplicated it and then just uh, switched this uh, background image. He put the text that he wanted and then he made uh, an image rounded on the other side. So let's just do uh, 100 over here. Let's delete this one. Let's do 600 on this part, and then let's delete this one. So now we got the same effect on the picture. You can see the same effect as we have here. It is just rounded from the other side. So now when you import this picture to your builder uh, and put it on, on the other side, basically it comes here, the text elements go there. That's it. It's pretty simple. He also made some... Uh, some padding between, so he made that the size is uh, basically that the elements are uh, are moved away from each other, the top over here and the bottom, but that's approximately it. So in case you're going for a look that he achieved here, you can do that one as well. And also now you know how you can create an image that looks like this. He took an image, he just made the uh, the borders, the, the corners uh, here rounded on this side as well, this side and on the, on the bottom right hand corner. And then he just pulled in a, a triangle, put a bit of, of white behind it. And then this is how he achieved it. I am very happy that we have users in our group who are experimenting with these kinds of layouts. This is kind of more professional for designers. Uh, this is for somebody that is more uh, more years in design. But in case you are wondering how you can get simple images like these, then now you should know. Uh, please let me know uh, in case you have any questions. I have a couple of questions here. I will be answering them, but please, this is the time now you can type in your, your questions so that we can answer them there. Um, let's see, Rob has a question. Can you blur and put an overlay color on the image or make it more transparent? Um, yes, you can do that. Uh, you cannot make the image. I actually, yeah, you can make the image transparent using these options here. So you have the transparency option over here on the top. You can also do background. So basically once this is, 
Uh, once, for example, let me just create a block, an empty block. And I want to just make sure that the, the, the block here. Let me just pull in something. Here, so now I will put put an image in the block over here. Um, so now I have the block chosen. I'm missing the. Okay, so background image. I will place this image as my background. Okay, I will work on this. I wait for the green box over here. Select. So now you can see that there is a, the image in the in the background of this element. Let's just make it in the center and then to cover. Okay. To increase the size of this one, I will come and delete these first two, just so that we can see more on the page. Okay. So now I created an empty block. I placed an element on it and just put a background image uh, because I want to show you the, some effects that you can achieve with this. I want to just make a height a bit bigger and then now you can see more of it. So once we have the block chosen, you can see that we are in the block section in this menu. We come to the color, we can put a background color on it. Let's just put a nice orange red ish color and here once you're still in the color option you can actually move the slider and increase the opacity this will make the color transparent so that you can still see the image behind it but the color will be visible the image will be visible and this will give you a nice effect it's like a blurred slash colored effect that you can achieve on your websites. Um, I'm using this very, very often. Sometimes when I want to have white text and then my image is, oh, my image is very, very bright or full of colors, it, the, the, the white text is not very visible. So I usually choose then a black color and I just darken it a bit. And if I put my text in white, it is, it is nice and visible because this is the thing that pops out for people when they load, uh, load this website. So this is something that you can play with. It is pretty fun. You need to make sure that you put the, the background in the block section. And so basically you choose the block over here, you put the background image, you choose the color that you want, and then you play with this lever uh, left and right to adjust it, uh, adjust the, the blur of the color that you want. So this was the answer. This was the reply to uh, to Rob. Can we put an overlay color on the image? Yes, we can. Let's see. He had another question. How would you put that round green button in between two boxes like it shows? Yeah, this is this is an interesting question. What I think he did here is he made a very thin block. I'm not pretty sure. This is this is what I was playing with for quite a while. I decided I will not be recreating it here in this video because I could look like a fool. But what I think that he created, and let's so he um, he pulled in uh, an empty container. He made sure that okay. So. I will be using an icon because I have this rounded icon that I can use. I just want to increase it so that you can see it. Um, I will make sure that it is in the in the center, and then I will. How can I show you? Okay, so I will put design block above and below this empty container that I just did. So. Let me just do this and then this. So what he did is, in my opinion, I'm not quite sure. I would need to ask him because he was quite good with that. 
but he was playing with the the spacing he was he was pulling the element like this you see the background is empty so it's transparent so he pulled the this element over the the upper block so he made an empty block placed this image on it and then he pulled the the, the block over the, the top one and then he did the same with this one he just pulled pulled the next block a bit a bit uh, closer to this one here and then this is how he got this look this is how i would do it don't take my word for it that he did it this way but this is something more advanced i don't think you need to do that but i think he did it this way um let me just see the next question jonathan asked the background in pink would you use the same tool um I'm not sure I understand your question. The background in pink, would you use the same tool? Mm, Jonathan, I'm not quite sure I understand your question. So we had a, an image with the pink background and I was pulling the background color option here. Is this the one that you're asking me about? Would I use the same tool? I'm not pretty sure what you mean by that. Could you please like, explain your question? Um, guys, uh, we are coming to the end of this uh, this live stream. So in case you have some questions, please pop them in for me so I can get them answered for you. Um, let me just move this away. So we were we were talking about importing images. We were let's see. Jonathan replied behind the text in the example. The background in pink, would you use the same? Would you use the same tool behind the text in the example? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jonathan, I'm not quite sure I understand your question. Um, anyway, I will just try to figure it out later on and I will reply to you in the comments. I just want to wrap this up quickly and then um, I'll answer you in the in the Facebook comments later on. So what we did basically is we we learned how to import images, how to take them from the image library, how to crop them, how to make borders on them, how to place and resize them, how to make round images using the using the the corner option and also using the element from the elements tab, um, the rounded image option. I also used you. Uh, I also used some tools over here that you can uh, achieve layouts like Tong did. Tong is a member of the Groove Digital group. He just posted recently an image about this one and how he achieved it. I was trying to recreate it in this video. So in case you just joined, you can uh, rewatch it. I had another question from Rob. Instead of background pick, you want a color blue. How do you pick a color instead of a picture? Let me just do that. So we have now this block over here. I make sure that I'm on the block section. I want to just change the color of the block. So I come here to the background and I basically just change the, the color over here. It is pretty simple. Let me just see if this is what he was asking. Instead of a background pick, you want a color blue. How would you pick a color instead of pick or instead of picture? So this is the way. Um, in case you don't want a picture, you can just put a, a, a colored background without any issues. You can also play with the, with, the, with the opacity of it, but this is basically how you do it. So that's it, guys. I hope you learned something. Let me just put this back. Um, in case you have any questions, please pop them in the below this video so that it stays on point so I can go in and, and answer it quickly for you. Uh, in case you have any other questions or you would like me to create some tutorials on something else, please head over to askgroove.net and then you can uh, request training videos and tutorials. This is my workplace. I usually go there every morning and basically I'm there all the time seeing what I can do uh, trainings on. I will just show you quickly. Um, askgroove.net. It is going to pop me over to this platform. There is a couple of 
things that people requested already, like setting up setting up GroovePay. This is coming soon. GroovePay is being updated, so I will just make an updated video once this is done. Agency feature is not quite uh, ready yet. Affiliate program and portal setup. This is coming. On Monday build, I will be creating a product in GrooveSell. We will be building out a page together, you and me. And later on that week, I will be creating an affiliate portal for the product that we create on Monday. Um, there's a couple of things that I will be working on. There's a cannot adjust a five column to fit a tablet view and how to apply Perxilla. Uh, I will be going through these and then creating videos and yes, so <laughs> yeah, Rob already messaged me a couple of times for affiliate step-by-step uh, -step build. This coming, Rob, don't worry, I will be working on that one from next week. After Monday, it is going to be affiliate time. Um, so yeah, guys, in case you want me to do something that you are struggling with, please head over to that portal, askgroove.net. Uh, just write in what you would like to see and then I will take uh, some time, create a live stream or maybe a, a separate video and then I will create that for you. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate that you are here, that you are participating. I'm really sorry about the echo on the beginning. Uh, thank you for letting me know. And then, yeah, see you tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow with another video. So in case you need me in the meantime, you know where to find me. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye-bye.